Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the uh, Module 7, Organic Chemistry. This is video number 5 and a video where we're going to be looking at naming amines and amides. It's the fifth in our series of naming of organic compounds. In this particular video, we will be doing what we usually do when we're looking at nomenclature, but this time we're going to focus on the amines and the amides. The amines are characterized, if you think of amines in association with ammonia, then you're pretty close to what's going to happen here with our amine group. Our amide group are a con. So we're going to look at specifically how the C, the O and the N bond together to give us an amide group and how we name each of these two uh, groups of organic compounds. So the first one that we want to have a look at are the amines. So these are hydrocarbons which contain an amine functional group which is attached to one or more of the carbon atoms. Now generally speaking, I would expect that you will only need to deal with ammonium uh, amine groups where there is one amine group and where there may be um, some side chains off that um, amine group. So let's have a little bit of a look. Uh, the one that we've drawn here, if we transfer it into a uh, structural formula, so you can see uh, NH2, and then we have two carbon, uh, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, and three hydrogens off these other carbons. So the one that I've drawn here has one, two, three carbons all together, and our amine functional group right here. Finish off the hydrogens, and here it is. The name that we associate with these um, is uh, a prefix that's based, as usual, on the numbers of carbons, which in this case is prop. The style of um, the bonds between the carbons, which in this case are all single bonds, so it's propan. And then the suffix is the functional group here, which is an amine. So therefore, the full name becomes propanamine. So this one that I've made uh, has one, two, three, four, five carbons on it all together. So that would be a pent. If there was no amine group on it, it would just be pentane. So what we show, uh, what we say to show that there is actually an amine group, this NH2 group on the end attached to the rest of this molecule is pentanamine. So pentanamine. This gives us a way of naming each of these compounds based on um, the length of the chain and where that is attached to our amine group. Now, I haven't looked at a lot of um, side branching at this point in time, but I thought this is a good time to start. Partly because when we start adding our methyl group, so this is a, a carbon with three hydrogens, so it's a methyl group. It doesn't have the fourth because the fourth is where it's going to bond. So I'm going to place this right here at the moment. When I do that, I now have a methyl group, a methyl group coming off my main chain, which is attached to my amine group. So the way that I'm going to number it is I'm going to assume that the carbon that's attached to the amine group is the number one carbon. So therefore, one, two, three. So the methyl group is off the third carbon. So therefore, I would call that three methyl pentanamine. But what happens if the methyl group is not off the carbon chain, but is actually off the nitrogen? So now it's starting to become really complex. So I still have my original five carbons in the 
in the, the original chain. I have my amine group, but the amine group has had a substitution. One of the hydrogens is now substituted for this methyl group. So it's still methyl, pentanamine, but how do I show that the methyl group is actually coming off the nitrogen and not off the main chain? Well, the way that I do that is instead of using a number, which is what I would use to show which carbon it's attached to, I'm going to use the capital letter N. And the capital letter N tells me that the methyl group comes off the actual nitrogen part of the amine component of this molecule and not one of the other carbons. So this, in this case, to name this, I would name it N-methyl pentanamine. N-methyl pentanamine. They get, they're getting a little bit messy and a bit of a mouthful, um, but we're getting close to the end of the numbers that we have to look at. So let's have a look at the amides. Hopefully you can see that the only difference between an amine and an amide is that the carbon to which that amine group is attached is also attached to a double bonded oxygen. So if again we look at the example we have here, which has got three carbons, the number one carbon is the one that's attached to both the amine group here and the double bonded oxygen or oxy group here. And the way we name it would be the same. So because it's got three, it's prop. Because there's single bonds between them, it's propan. And because this time it's not an amine, but the double bonded oxygen becomes means it now becomes an amide. So this is propanamide. Uh, and we can see that when we draw this particular one, if I draw the ends here as they're written on this side with the hydrogens, then there's a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. Then there's another carbon which is attached to two hydrogens. And then there's another carbon that's attached to three hydrogens. So, and one of the things that I think it's really important for you to do is to start, when you're looking at the model kits, Take a model that you can start with and see what you need to do to turn it into the next one. So this was uh, one that we looked at in a previous slide. This is pentanamine. So this is the amine group because the uh, nitrogen and two hydrogens are attached to a carbon that's only attached to hydrogens. So therefore, to turn it into an amide, I'm going to need to remove both of those hydrogens and I'm going to need to use one of my little uh, bendies in order to allow me to create the double bond I need um, to attach the oxygen and when I do this I will end up with an amide group and this is the only difference between an amine and an amide. Same molecule that you've already looked at previously let me just orient it so you can see it so again, we have one, two, three, four, five. So there are five carbons in this chain. You can see this time the functional group is a CON group. It's a CON. CON is our carbon double bonded oxygen and our nitrogen. This together is what is forming our amide functional group. Just as we looked at for the um, amines, you can have methyl or ethyl groups attached somewhere along the chain, either to the carbons or to the nitrogen. And again, we would name them the same way. We would give a number for which carbon they were off, starting with number one being our carbon double bonded to an oxygen. And we would give it an N um, if the uh, if the side chain was attached to the nitrogen. And of course, you can have an N comma N if you have two methyl groups attached here and here. It's getting pretty complex, but at this point in time, uh, in our initial study of nomenclature, this is, this is almost the last group that we need to look at. Just one more, and we'll at least have covered most of uh, the key functional groups for nomenclature. Thanks for watching.